Amen. This morning we have come to worship the Lord, our living King. Amen. We are in worship mode, not election mode. Let's do the confessions together. I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God the Holy Spirit who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I learn the word of God here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus name, Amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated. We are going to continue to study about the character, attributes of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Holy Bible. And the purpose of our studying about the Lord is so that we will uh, know how Jesus our Lord is and can emulate and can follow and can try and become like our Lord through efforts that we make to be like him, right? And one of the things about our Lord Jesus was his character was very gracious, very gracious. The Lord is gracious. You'll find that again and again in the Bible. The Lord is gracious. Our God is a gracious God. Now, a lot of times when you look at documentaries, films, movies, you will find that people in the olden days, they would scream a lot, they would shout a lot. They're generally louder because those days when you have a crowd, uh, you don't have microphones, you don't have amplifiers, you don't have electrical systems that would amplify the voice of a human. So in the battlefield, they didn't have wireless systems to communicate. So they would shout so that, you know, their people could listen to them. And many people think that when anointing comes, when God's power comes, you have to be rude and you have to shout. Well, sometimes you shout because there is an inspiration to do so. The Lord Jesus also raised his voice occasionally. And when you see dead people, you have to shout. A dead church makes you shout much. But uh, the fact is that the Lord Jesus was very gracious and we don't have to show our power, our strength through arrogant means. You know, sometimes you have to be loud, sometimes you have to be strong, and yet you can be gracious. You do not have to express uh, negativity. You can get things accomplished through being gracious. Being gracious is not just a feminine quality, it is a divine quality, and it was expressed through male gender in the person of Christ our Lord. So graciousness, being grace is very important. And God's children must be gracious in success and in failure. Some people become very arrogant when they are successful. But when they are failures, they are very gracious, very polite, very kind. But when they become successful, they forget about being kind. They forget about being polite. They are very, uh, somehow they are very, very hard to work with. But some others are the other way. When they become very successful, they are polite, they are kind. But when they are failures, oh, you can't go near them. They're having a bad day. They're going through a failure. They're going through a breakup. You watch out. Don't go near them because it can be dangerous. It's something ready to explode. Either way is bad. Look at the Lord Jesus. In the greatest moments of success, he was so gracious. And under the intense stress, two guys on the cross beside the Lord Jesus, fighting with each other about Jesus, and the Lord was gracious. Even under such intense pressure, and pain. And that's who we want to be. We want to be people who are gracious like Jesus, both in the most successful moments of life and in the most difficult moments of life and in most of the moments which are in between those extreme moments. God's graciousness is revealed to us through the way the Lord Jesus would rest. Resting is an interesting part of being gracious. Yeah, working out of rest is an important part of being gracious. Rest like the Lord Jesus. 
The disciples were sailing on the boat with the Lord Jesus. They were all going on a, uh, not on a vacation. No, these days boating means vacation. Those days boating means journey. It meant they were going from point A to point B. So they were traveling to the other side of the lake. As they were going by the boat, there was a huge storm and the disciples thought they're going to die. Now, see, let's get this. Now, when you're driving through a road full of potholes, you know, uh, it's, it's really dangerous. The other day, I felt very sad when I read this report about accidents that happened because of potholes on the road uh, and, and how people in the city were uh, writing protest letters. They were uh, so agitated about road, roads not uh, being kept well and the potholes and not, not able to drive properly because of the dangers on the road. Uh, anytime you have a danger on the way, it's bad. And when I, when I was reading that, I was feeling so bad at how the civic authorities of, of that part of North America did not take care of their county. You know, there was so much corruption, they didn't take care of their county. Last week that report came out. So, <laughs> I know some of you are thinking, now why have a green card? You, you, you have the same facilities here uh, in Nepal or Bhutan. But the point is, <laughs> the, the, the point is, it's, it's not just as funny as it sounds, but it's more painful than what it sounds. When, when, you, when you know the way, you kind of know how to avoid a pothole. But if you are a newcomer to that area, well, you're going to break your suspensions. You're going to break your back. You're going to break your vehicle. Why? You don't know. If you know the way, then you kind of know whether it's good or bad, it's dangerous, how to avoid. When the disciples of the Lord Jesus were traveling with the Lord, Jesus, our Lord, was sleeping. Let's say that together. The Lord was uh -huh. It's very interesting. He was not just lying down. Many people are lying down but not able to sleep. Sleeping is resting. Lying down is just a posture. It's just a gesture. It's just a physical expression. Resting is to get sleep. The Lord was sleeping. And the disciples who know the sea, who know that shipping route, who know that boat pathway in the water. They knew the storm was going to kill them. But the Lord Jesus was sleeping. The storm, man, it's mighty storm. There's rain, there's noise. It's probably the rumbling thunder. It's all of those things. But Jesus was sleeping. What woke up Jesus? Not thunder and lightning. Not the noise of storms. What woke up Jesus was the prayer of the disciples. Master, how many of you have, at least in your childhood, when it was raining heavily, you stepped out and you shouted. Anybody's done that? At least, oh, you all are such nice people. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. I, especially while uh, riding my, or driving my motorbike, there are times where, you know, uh, I, I've heavy rain and uh, got really wet. And I remember uh, times when I thought, what's the point in getting upset? Anyway, I'm getting wet. And so I would shout hallelujahs on the road because no one's listening. You know, when it's raining, it's so noisy with the sound of the water falling, especially in a heavy rain, no one can hear you. But even in the storm, though the Lord was sleeping, the voice, which is much more mellow, which is much more softer than the storm, woke up the Lord Jesus. Jesus did not wake up with the thunder and the storm. Jesus woke up with the prayers of the disciples. You know, to be gracious in life like Jesus means to be able to sleep through the storm and wake up for only what matters to you. Only to what you should respond. Only to what you are responsible over. Only to what you are called to perform. Otherwise, go to sleep, brother. Go to sleep, sister. Your Lord, the keeper of Israel, is watching over you. He will neither slumber nor sleep. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a mighty hand. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord slept through the storm. It's only the feeble voice of his disciples. It's only the softer voice of his disciples that woke him up. What wakes you up? Is it your responsibility that wakes you up? Or is it the circumstance and the negativity that wakes you up? Or let me ask you the question differently. What keeps you awake? What stops you from your rest? 
What takes you off from the peace that God has given you? Is it responsibilities to which you must respond? Or is it just the negativity which is keeping you alarmed? Some people are so caught up with the terribleness of evil that happens in the society. There's nothing they can do about it, but they just get worried about it. They get disturbed about it and they lose the grace God has put in their life and the expression of grace, which is to rest trusting in God Almighty. Hallelujah. Resting is a sign of your trust in God. Jesus rested. Why? He knew we will get on the other side. He knew there was a mission. You know, when the, when the boat, the Lord woke up and he calmed the storm with his words. <laughs> Interesting, no? The loudest thing about a storm is its noise. And the Lord calmed the storm with a softer voice. And said, be calm. And the whole thing became calm. They reached the other side. And what welcomed them? A powerful demonic force. A huge demonic power. A lot of times, the pressure, the struggle, the evil that you face on the way that disturbs your grace does not come from your past. It comes from your future that wants to stop you from where God is taking you. You may be thinking, oh, it's my past karma, it's my ancestral curse, it's the negativity of something I've done, uh, you know, five years ago, or oh, maybe it's the poor relationships that's hurting me today. Well, it may be true, but not always true. Sometimes it's the evil powers that want to stop you from where God is taking you, and they're battling you from the future saying, we won't let you get here. By the time you come here, you will lose your peace. You won't know how to handle this. I tell you today we're going to walk in grace in Jesus name like how the Lord Jesus walked walk in oh come on give the Lord a mighty hand absolutely walk in the grace of God hallelujah walk in the grace of the Lord Jesus now grace has a different meaning apart from what I'm teaching it's about the grace of God but today we are trying to learn to be gracious like the Lord Jesus and being restful Working out of rest is very important to be like Jesus. Amen. There are fantastic champions in the world. Business leaders, you know, the Tatas, the Birlas. They've done a fantastic job in our country. They have done great things. And it's good to learn from such successful people. But don't you forget this. A lot of times when we learn from people in the world, we forget that if you learn only from them, then you will sometimes violate principles of eternal life. But when you learn from them in subjection, in respect to the character of Christ, you will not allow your character to be distorted. Hallelujah. And that is very important. The Bible says that <laughs> when I wrote this down, I wasn't really happy. The Bible says stress is normal. It takes efforts to be in rest. Stress is normal. It takes efforts to be in rest. To take rest takes efforts. And to be stressed out is very normal. You have to do nothing. Just look at what others are doing, you will get stressed. <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's the sad truth about the world we live in today. And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes focused on how Jesus is, how the Lord is. And guess what? You are going to succeed. Not out of tantrums, not out of uh, fighting and shouting and screaming and uh, getting agitated and losing your inner peace. No, you're going to glide like an eagle that soars the heavens and, you know, scales the skies. You're going to glide into your miracles in the peace. I love that song Pastor Deepak and all of us sang today. Oh, I'll rise up like an eagle. Hallelujah. When God's love surrounds you, brother, more than the circumstance around you, His wind is beneath your wings and you will fly like an eagle because His grace is on your life. Amen. Stress is normal. <laughs> you don't have to create it for yourself. Others will create it for you. <laughs> Stress is normal. What is a movie? A movie is what can entertain you. How? Through stress. 
makes you laugh, it makes you cry. It, 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 it puts stress on different parts of your emotions or your mind. What's news? What's news? What's news agencies doing today? What is TRP? It's all about how much stress, how much they can evoke you. <laughs> Good stress, bad stress, but stress. Stress is normal. It's very, very normal. All this really, really, I laughed at this, but I also felt sad. I found a study recently, well, recently may be wrong. I found a study which I read again recently. I would read it long ago, but I found that reinforced through other studies recently that people who are abused in life are the ones who abuse others more in their life. People who've gone through childhood abuse, early life abuse, have gone through struggles, are the ones who lavishly give it to others. Uh, that, that surprised me. I mean, there could be exceptions of people who've gone through abuse, who've gone through domestic violence, saying, okay, I've gone through this bad and I'm not going to let it pass on. Now, there are people who've made that decision. But on a larger, uh, you know, uh, on a larger perspective, people who've gone through sufferings are the ones who make others suffer. If there's one thing history has taught us, is that history repeats itself. Because somehow, stress is normal. And bad stress, stress is very injurious to health. Because bad stress expresses negativity. Bad stress builds plan. Based out of anxiety. It's built. Bad stress makes you plan things with a negative response out of the fear that is bothering your mind. And you know, you know, that's not working out of rest. That's not working out of the grace God has given you. That's working out of negativity. It's an open door actually for the evil and the enemy to attack you. Do you know a lot of times, ah, how do I say this? A lot of times that heart attack, that cancer, that failure, that bad language, that distraction, did not come from the devil as in devil coming and stopping the muscles of your heart or devil coming and making oneself malignant through some magic. No, a lot of times all these problems the devil achieves in our life because we allow bad stress to make us misbehave through our eating habits, our talking habits, our lifestyle habits and the devil knows he's kicked the ball in the wrong direction and you will not hit your goal the ball's going out of the park in the wrong way. Don't allow that to happen. That's why we must let our life be guided by the Lord on a daily basis. I hope, I hope, I hope I'm communicating here. The way you all are sitting, I feel so encouraged. I'm hoping you're listening to me. <laughs> the other day I met a young man who said to me, Pastor, uh, last Sunday you preached something in third service that you didn't say on the YouTube. I said in the first service. And I asked him, okay, what was that? He said, well, I'm trying to catch that because uh, you said something and all the people started clapping. That's when I realized you said something because my mind had gone off somewhere. And, and that was in the third service. If it was first service, I could have watched it on the YouTube. And I told him, you know, there's one thing I know. You will go to heaven, brother. Because your, your, your honesty is so perfect. There are people who will watch me on YouTube for five minutes once in a month and say, oh, we are online members, Pastor. And, and then there are guys like this who, who, who don't listen to me for two minutes or three minutes during a Sunday service and they feel guilty. I tell you, this church is growing because there are people who don't rest and have good stress when they hear God's word. Good stress is important. And I'm coming to that. Good stress is important because grace flows in that good stress called faith. Resting in the grace of God is not the same as being careless. But it's about working hard in the good plan that God has for you. Working hard knowing that God will give me the harvest. Knowing that even if I have a bad colleague, even if I have a negative ambience, even if the subject is too difficult to study, even if my house doesn't have the money to pay my admission, I will work hard knowing my God will make a way somewhere. He will take me forward. Oh, victory will come. Go ahead, take a minute to clap your hands and thank the Lord, knowing, yes, my God will make a way. Hallelujah. 
Second Peter chapter 3, let's read verse 18. But grow, you see that word grow? Grow in the grace. And what kind of grace? The grace which is in the knowledge about, about how Jesus our Lord handled up his grace. Grow in that grace, that's when you bring glory to Christ in your life. Growth has pains attached to it. Medical doctors will tell you that young boys and girls, when they are growing up from the age of four or five years above, sometimes even earlier, through their teenage, they have different discomforts in their body because their bones are stretching. Their bodies are growing. And some of them go through emotional struggles, sometimes through mental struggles. Why? Because growth has pain attached to it. Bo growth has got difficulties attached to it. You know, me and my wife, we were talking to uh, one of the doctors some time ago, and we were talking about sometimes how our children talk about some discomforts, and we were just casually asking, and the doctor was giggling and said, that, that is good. I said, no, it's not. We don't like to hear things like, oh, hand is paining, leg is paining when they're going to sleep. We just prefer they sleep peacefully. And the doctor said, Pastor, that's called growth pain. I had never heard that word till then. When the doctor told me, it's the first time I heard that word many years ago. I said, growth pain? And he said, yes, it's medically called growth pain. When they are growing, they have pains attached to it. You know, sometimes good stress causes us some kind of pain. But don't stop growing in the grace of God Almighty. You know, <laughs> when you grow up, it causes you some kind of pain because of new responsibilities, because of the promotion you have, because of the success God gave you. You got married. <laughs> it's a good thing that happened with a little pain. <laughs> Family has, has good stress attached to it. You know, as children, or admission to a good college, it has got a good stress attached to it. <laughs> All good things that God gives you they have good responsibilities and therefore they have some amount of stress in it. Don't lose the grace God has poured in your life. Work on those responsibilities, not through bad stress, but through good rest. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't handle the grace of God by being irresponsible on the things God gives you. Handle things responsibly. Peaceful manner, successful manner, confident manner. Respond with passion for things you can control. And the things you can't control, trust in God and leave it. Like a farmer who sowed the seed and will wait for the rain to come. Hey, be happy. Go home, have your dinner. Next week fasting, but otherwise. You know, make sure you spend time before God peacefully knowing my God will take care. My job is to sow the seed. My God will make it to sprout. My God will send the former rain and the latter rain. My God controls the circumstance. Hallelujah. When you are gracious and you rest, it is a proof that you are actually trusting God and his grace is over your life. Amen. Grace and faith is more important than tantrums in faith because that also happens. Some people get so anointed and they become so difficult to work with. It's so funny, you know, we have all kinds of people in the world. Some people get so anointed that no one can talk to them. They're so full of faith. I got a headache, bro. That's because you don't have faith. Don't talk to me. Where is, when God anoints you, let your grace flow out. I heard some Pentecostal amens for this one. I noticed that. <laughs> because this is a fact. When God gives us grace, when God gives us success, when God's power comes on us, don't clinch your fist to beat people up. Spread your open arms to serve people with love. <laughs> you are able to learn lessons of life only when you are resting in the grace that God gives you. Grace makes you speak softly. Softly doesn't mean low volume. Softly means Kindly, softly means respectfully, softly means gently. This is so important. I want us to read one scripture. This is like Jesus, Psalm 45. Let's read verse 2. You are the most, just talking about the Lord Jesus. You are the most excellent of men and your lips have been anointed. Wow. 
Because your lips are anointed with. Have you heard of anything apart from lipstick? It's called gray stick. Okay, tweet that. But point is, how do you become excellent? Not by beating others down. That's not the Jesus style. That may be the Facebook style. That may be the Microsoft style. That may be the industrial style. But the Jesus style is grace on your lips. And that means your tongue, the way you talk. God has poured grace on your lips. And therefore, there is excellence. See, somehow people have this, the devil has managed to confuse people into thinking that when you're gracious and you're kind, you can't be on the top, you have to be average, you know, you have to be like a doormat, everyone can stamp on. No man, when you have grace in your life, you will be the most excellent among men. Yeah, that's grace. Hello? Are you listening, church? Grace is not being a failure out of being nice. Grace is being on top of the world, successful out of being Christ-like. Hallelujah. You can be successful. Now, the hypocrisy is the problem. Many people are nice in the way they talk, but the way they behave is very rude. You know, they make, they speak policies that are sounding like great, but their actual actions are destroying the society. Now, if you're thinking of someone, I didn't say anything. But, don't become like them. Be like Jesus. Be like the Lord. Thou art excellent. Please put that scripture again. I love it. Let's read it again. You are the most. And your lips have been. How many of you today want to really pray? You don't have to raise your hands, but you really want to pray saying, God, let my lips be anointed. My words be anointed with your grace constantly and let it lead into excellence in my life. If you really look at human society, most of the problems we have in the world are because of the words people speak. Have you seen children fighting? It doesn't start with fist fight. It starts with words. Hey, hey, what, what? It goes on. <laughs> Many people fighting in the world today are boys and girls who only grew up physically. Nothing grew here in the mind. <laughs> Graciousness is powerful. We must talk honorably. You know why many times when people marry there is problems? And they are wondering, before marriage we had no problem. Every Friday we used to drink coffee together. Saturday we used to drink other things together. Sunday we used to go to church sometimes. And, and it was so beautiful. But after marriage, don't know what happened. He has changed, she has changed. I'll tell you what happens. Before marriage, many people are gracious in the way they talk. I don't know if you're clapping or crying, but... <laughs> They're very gracious. Hi. How are you? You slept well. So concerned. After marriage, still sleeping. Huh? You don't look so innocent. I know. But <laughs> The other day one man asked me, how do I co convert my girlfriend into a wife? <laughs> and I told him, that will happen only when you convert yourself into a husband material. <laughs> Graciousness, honorable talk. <laughs> Where, where, you know, familiarity breeds contempt and that is so dangerous. Just because you've been with that person for 20 years, that's your child, you know, the, you know your son, you know your daughter for 30 years, you know your spouse for 10 years. 
Be respectful in the way you talk. <laughs> Today's message is too good. Look at someone beside you and say, he's speaking exactly what God wants to tell you and me. Come on. Let's see who's got the guts to do that. Okay, any consequences after that is your responsibility. <laughs> Always speak life. Always speak blessings. It's a decision me and my wife took in our marriage. We will not speak negative about each other or our marriage or our children or our future even in a joke or in moments of tantrums we will not speak negative there are times I don't know why I married <laughs> anyone else you are the best in my life <laughs> she knows I know God knows I didn't mean it but <laughs> but I grew up into living towards that and she does the same. What did your mother <laughs> teach you so nicely? <laughs> Speak lovingly, respectfully to each other. Hallelujah. Most relationships are messed up because of lack of grace in the words you speak or the emotions you express or the emails or the WhatsApp you chat, the emojis you send. You do one thing, just try putting grace on your lips. See what a difference you will make. Try it for the next uh, two or three years. You can't have short term results. You have to look for long term results. Put grace as the next five year plan on your lips. Whoever you are talking to, bargaining for price. We Indians, no one can bargain like us. <laughs> we bargain, we can bargain, we have a genetic disposition to bargain. <laughs> but do it with grace. I was standing in one shop a few years ago, Avenue Road. One family came and said, if you don't lower the price, we are going. And actually they had come with one big list. I had gone to pick up some things for the church, electrical shop. They had come with one big list. They were building a house. They wanted so many electrical items. But the shopkeeper said, no, I'm, I can't give you that discount. They said, then we are going. The dukan said, Madam, sir, do what you want. The dukan keeper said, do what you want. But I can't. Then I was talking to him and I casually said, Man, you're pretty strong and rude, huh? Thanks for giving me the discount. But uh, you're strong. He said, Sir, that next shop is my brother's shop. <laughs> they will come back, you wait and see. I was catching a flight from Calcutta. I had gone to preach in uh, somewhere in the northeast and my, <clears throat> my what's it called? Uh, connecting flight was from uh, Calcutta. It was on a Saturday evening. <coughs> and because of some weather condition in the northeast, our flight had taken off late and um, landed in Calcutta late. And so my connecting flight was gone. Uh, that same company did not have the connecting flight. Another company had a connecting flight. Uh, but now uh, buying a ticket for that was very difficult because all the people who landed late on this flight, some of them had to travel to Bangalore and it was a problem. And I could see the people were shouting at this guy, you know, the flight uh, company representative. And they were scolding him. There were people abusing him. Now, I, I'm not even able to reach that man because the crowd shouting at him. So I did something very wrong. I walked through the barricades. I moved the barricade, walked to him and I said, I just want to say one thing to you, man. I don't know how you handle this. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. And I said that sincerely. I thought Sunday I won't be able to make it to church. But I thought first I want to appreciate this man. The way people are scolding him. He was not the pilot. He was not flying. But somehow people held him responsible for the delay of the flight. 
and they were scolding him. And he asked me, sir, what do you want? <laughs> he knew. I didn't appreciate him simply. <laughs> he was a smart guy. I said, listen, I mean, I, I, I feel ashamed even telling you this. I mean, you're handling so much, but, you know, the, there is a flight from another company. And uh, I don't know if I can go outside and book the flight and stuff like that. And, and you know, I'm a priest. Tomorrow morning, I have to be in my church, and I just don't know how to explain this. He said, sir, give me a few minutes. I said, okay, I'll wait. I, I trust you, I'll wait here. I waited for a few minutes. Then I walked up to him and I said, I don't mean to disturb you, but, but I know you're going to do the job, so I'm just waiting. It's, it's okay, right? And, and then he said to me, he said, sir, there's no way you can go out and pick the ticket and come back in. But we have intercompany ticketing policy. You don't have to pay anything. If you have to pay, I'll tell you. <coughs> he went to the manager. He got my tickets. He did everything. And as I was walking away, I looked at him and I said, you know, thank you. I mean, you're really a nice guy. And he looked at me and he said, when you're nice, even I am nice. <laughs> Sometimes, when grace is on your lips, you get your ticket. <laughs> you, you, it's, it's good to learn to be polite and kind to people. You know what I'm saying? Have you heard me say things like, even if you don't clap, it's okay, I'm going to preach. That's, that's the moment of highest stress and frustration coming out, out of gracious lips. <laughs> God wants us to speak graciously. Hallelujah. The problem with many of us is, today it will be full grace overload. How, how are you? Oh, you are so wonderful, so nice. And after three days, day. What is this? See, don't go back into the old mode. Today, what God is changing your barometer, God is changing your temperature, God is changing your lip filters. Keep that for the next few years. And you will see heavens open above you and God's favor rolling on your life. <coughs> many people, many people cancel the benefit of their work. They cancel the benefit of their efforts with bad words. Don't do that. Multiply the benefits of your efforts. Multiply the benefits of your prayers with gracious words in interpersonal relationships. Grace from our Lord Jesus Christ was generosity and care to benefit others from personal success. You must be a blessing to others through your personal success. Don't be a blessing to others by defeating yourself. Be a blessing to others by building yourself. Be wise when you bless others. Respect others. Jesus came to die. Why did he come to die? So that we could live. Now you don't start dying. Out of trying to be good, don't make yourself a failure. Be good through success that God wants you to have. Be respectful of others. Build actions of energy and wisdom that help you to change and grow. Grace and relationships. And when you talk about intense relationships like family, recognize the inherent differences between siblings that you have or the spouse you married or the generational gap between grandparents or parents and children, recognize those differences, that, that there are inherent differences. Respect those differences, not just tolerate it, but respect it. Forgive quickly, because you have to forgive anyway. Don't delay to forgive, forgive quickly. And when you serve people in your own life, when you're talking about uh, family in that sense, so intense, you know, serve with joy. Serve without expecting anything. A few weeks ago, I was talking to an elderly gentleman in our church who's a good leader in the society. And he was telling me this. He said, Pastor, something that I learned in my life that has brought so much success to me is this. When I give somebody something, I forget about it. I don't expect good. I don't expect bad. I don't remember what I did to them. I forget about it. And he said, even at this old age, I'm reaping the benefits of that culture. And I think it's important. We must serve without expectations. I want to close with this. Grace of Jesus brings abundance mentality. Let's say that together. Abundance mentality. 
Let's say that again. Abundance. The grace, following the grace of Jesus leads us in rest. Following the grace of Jesus anoints our lips with grace. And following the grace of the Lord is about abundance mentality. Remember, the Lord was talking to thousands of people. And uh, <laughs> Jesus said, I want to give them lunch. Anybody has something that we can serve? Andrew picks up five loaves and two fishes from somebody and gives it to Jesus. And you know what, is the, what was the response of the disciples? <laughs> what can this do for this crowd? What was Jesus' response? Father, thank you for this. You know, abundance mentality will not criticize the little you have. Abundance mentality will thank God because God can work through it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm preaching good today. I'm preaching good today. Grace of Jesus works through us and abundance mentality flows. You don't, you don't mock your small beginnings. You don't mock the color of your skin. You don't laugh at the little or much of your education. You don't laugh at your vehicle that God gave you. You don't, you don't look down at the clothes that you have. No, you don't call it little. You thank God for it knowing. It may be little or much, but there is a God who can bring good results out of it. When you walk in grace, you have gratitude flowing out of you. Hallelujah. You have gratitude flowing out of you. I just feel in my heart the Holy Spirit touching some people over here from the beginning. Holy Spirit is reminding you one thing. Remember, the little or much that you have is not what will change your life. Your God is going to be the one who will change your life. Respect what you have. Value what you have. Thank God for what you have because it is being gracious like how our Lord Jesus was gracious. Let's read Romans chapter 5 verse 21 out loud. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death. Now God's wonderful grace, somebody shout wonderful grace. Rules instead giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ. When sin ruled, when stress ruled, when arrogance ruled, it brought death. But now let grace rule in our lives. And when grace rules in our life, it brings eternal life beyond the earth and abundant life on the earth. Hallelujah. Think of what God can do and plan according to God's will. Don't use God's power for your plan. Use God's power for God's plan. That will bring success in our life. When grace rules, let God's will rule. <laughs> I have to close. My time's up. I know you don't like it. Even I don't like it. Jude and verse 4, we are closing. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people. Why are they ungodly? Because they pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality. And instead of the Lord Jesus being their Lord, they become their own Lord. By using the grace of God. Now don't do that. David did that. And God said, you can't build my temple. Because I gave you an anointing to win. And you shed blood and did battles that I didn't ask you to. Don't misuse God's grace. Don't abuse God's grace. Because you can. You can use the techniques of God's word, principles of God's word, the power of God's word. You can misuse it and have success. But that will always create eternal failure. It may give you short-term success, but it will cause eternal failure. But when you use God's grace according to God's will, you know what? You will not only be rewarded on the earth, you will be rewarded in eternity. Close your eyes and say, Father, I heard your word today and I want to thank you for speaking to me. I thank you that there is healing in my life through your word. I thank you that this month as we are studying about you, Lord, that your grace is going to flow, not only through our words, not only in our lifestyle, but it's also going to change the way we think. It's going to change the way we feel. Today, I might be poor compared to others, emotionally, financially, maybe in my health, 
Maybe I'm weaker in the society. Maybe my success doesn't measure up to others' success. It's okay. Maybe I'm more successful than others. I don't care about those comparative terms. Lord, today I've understood your grace. And I want that grace of yours, that character of yours to flow through my life. I'm not going to complain if I'm not the best. I'm going to be thankful that I'm going to be more than just being the best. I'm going to be excellent. Not in comparative terms to others, but in absolute terms of your will for my life. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you that you have called me for your glory. You are my friend. I want to be like you. <coughs> Lord Jesus, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. Thank you for your divine anointing. Let me never use your grace as an excuse to live my own life and to be my own Lord. No, you be my Lord and may my life be excellent and successful for your glory. Heavenly Father, this beautiful morning, we thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for the power of your word and the greatness of your glory. We especially pray for our country, Lord, that our country will be blessed with your grace. As the season of choices are looming large, may your wisdom prevail on our nation and give us good leaders that will bring peace and prosperity. That your gospel will have freedom to change lives. We love you, Master. In Jesus' holy name we pray and the people said, Amen. Amen. Shall we sing a song before we pray and close? Is everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows gone. In temptation he's my strong and mighty top. I've all for him forsaken and all my idols gone. From my heart and now he keeps me by his side. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me, while I live by faith and do His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I nothing now to fear. From his mana he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory. Oh yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. He's the lily of the valley. Let's do the second stanza. Fairest of ten thousands to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows gone. In temptation he's my strong and mighty God. I've all for him forsaken. Come on, let's clap our hands, everybody. Let's sing it together. Shout it out by faith. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousands. Go ahead, take a few minutes, lift up your voice in worship of His grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, this morning we really want to thank you, God, that you taught us through your word. You're a gracious God. You're a loving God. And God, today we want to thank you for your beautiful presence, God, that you 
Every time we come to seek your face, you are there with us. And God, today we thank you that your word has spoken to our lives. Your word has, O oh God, breathed into our lives. And we thank you, God, that we will experience your grace, O oh Father, to change our lives. Thank you once again for the beautiful word. Lord, we pray for the newcomers today. We bless them, that each one of them, O oh God, we thank you that your grace will help them change. Your grace will change, O oh God, their situations around them, that you are still hearing our prayers, O oh God. Bless the newcomers. May your favor be upon them. Thank you, Lord. We pray, God, for those who are celebrating their birthdays, their marriage anniversaries this week. We thank you for another year. You have been so kind. You have been so gracious. You have been so good. We pray, Father, that this coming year will be even more blessed, that your grace will continue to lead them into greater things ahead, O oh God. We pray that each one will enjoy greater success, O oh God. We pray the families will enjoy your peace, your prosperity, your unity in their lives. Lord, we pray for those who are traveling this week. May your journey mercies go with them, protect them, keep them safe. And we pray, God, whatever work that they go for, that you will give them success by your grace that will lead them, oh Father. Thank you once again. Father, we pray for your children with a heart of gratitude and worship as they give their tithes, their offerings unto you. I pray you'll bless the work of their hands and make them fruitful, that their storehouses will have abundance, not lack. And if anyone's struggling here today, God, financially, we pray, God, that this week, let there be a supernatural breakthrough in their finances. Let lack turn into abundance, oh God. So God, I pray for your favor upon them. Thank you once again for this beautiful day. We worship you. We honor your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and the church said, Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the hand to the newcomers that are here for the first time. Thank you so much for joining with us as you walk out as a guest lounge. People waiting to meet with you, talk to you, pray with you. Also, one more announcement. The VBS registrations are open. So just go to the church website and you can, um, you know, register your kids. Not only for the kids, for those who like to volunteer for the VBS. If you like to be a volunteer in the VBS, you also can register. Or you'll find boards outside. You can just scan and you can register. All right. God bless you. Have a blessed week ahead.